Okay, Michael, now we're going to look at your full swing with an iron. In this swing report, we're going to focus on the fundamentals in your iron swing. As you improve these fundamentals, they will translate over to your driver swing. We're going to compare your swing to Grant weight. But instead of starting at the one position, we're going to start at the impact position, what is known as the seventh position. Here we are at the impact position. And the first thing you need to understand is that the golf ball only responds to one thing, and that is the laws of physics and motion that exist at the moment of impact. The golf ball is on the face of the club a fraction of a second. And whatever that ball does is in response to the club's position during that fraction of a second. And the club's position is responding to your swing form at that moment. So your position at impact is critical. And everything you do with your swing prior to impact is in preparation to have a fundamentally sound impact position. So the first thing we need to understand is what is a fundamentally sound club position at impact? What is it we want the club to be doing as it's hitting the golf ball? When the ball is on the ground, you must hit down on the golf ball. When the club arrives at the golf ball, we want there to be some continued downward arc in the swing. That means we need to have the club, the low point of your swing, in front of the golf ball. When you set up to hit the golf ball, when you take your backswing, when you start your downswing, and when you arrive at impact, we need to make sure that your golf circle has positioned the lowest point of that arc in front of the golf ball. And we do that in a couple of different ways. One is we want to make sure that there is a shaft lean at impact. As I'm showing Grant Waite, we can see that his hands are in front of the golf ball. Because his hands are in front of the golf ball, that positions the low point of his swing in front of the golf ball. And so when his club arrives at the ball, it is leaning towards the target there are still a few inches of remaining um, in his downward swing. He's hitting down into that golf ball. You might have a little bit of shaft lean, but not a lot. And so one of the things that you would need to do is, uh, both in your setup, make sure that you have your hands in front of the golf ball, and then learn how to move your body during the swing so that when you arrive at impact, your hands get in front of the ball before you hit the ball. The second and very important part of controlling your low point is positioning your body weight in front of the golf ball. The average pro has 85 percent of their weight on the, their left foot at impact. So if I draw a line straight up off of the left ankle of Grant Waite, you can see that it passes directly through the center of his body. He has about 85% of his weight on his left foot at impact. Your golf circle tends to, the center of that circle tends to be located close to the center of your mass. And so if, if you can get 85% of your weight on that left side, then that helps position the bottom of your arc in front of the golf ball. Now when we look and see where your weight is at impact, we can, it's easy to see that your weight is behind the left foot. It's behind the yellow line. So you basically have your low point behind the golf ball, and that's going to create fat shots and thin shots. In other words, your club is going to bottom out and reach its lowest point before it arrives at the golf ball. And that's going to cause you to either hit it fat, hit behind the golf ball, or if you miss the ground behind the ball, you'll you'll be too level or even swinging on the upswing and you'll hit a lot of thin shots. And so it'll be very difficult for you to have consistent solid shots uh, with your low point behind the golf ball. So in order to change the club's position at impact, you have to change your body's position at impact. We need to have you arrive at impact with your hands in front of the golf ball 
and with your weight more on your left foot. In fact, 85% of your weight or close to 85% of your weight needs to be on your left foot. So you're, you need to change the way you look at impact and start trying to look more like Grant Weight at impact. And there are some drills that we're going to do to teach you that feeling. Now before we review the other positions of the golf swing, I want to comment about some other good things that you're doing with your swing. If we were to look at your swing from the waist up, it looks very much like Grant Waite. Grant has a nice extended arm in both sides, his left arm. Your arms are, ex are fairly extended here. Grant's spine is, is tilted back and your spine is tilted back. So from the waist up, you have positioned yourself very similar to the pros. It's from the waist down is where you look different. And so most of our retraining of your swing is going to be in moving your weight, moving your legs, moving everything towards the target at impact. Now let's look at the one position. And during this review, we're going to be looking for those things that you need to change to help you have a better impact position. So we're going to be looking at the things that you do with your hands and arms in terms of helping you uh, put the club square to the ball and with the shaft lean. And we're also going to be looking at those things that you need to do with your, your weight shift so that you arrive at impact with 85% of your weight on your left side. So as we review the other positions of the golf swing, we're not going to be talking about every single missing fundamental that I observe. We're only going to be focusing on those missing fundamentals that are preventing you from having a good club position at impact. We want a club to be square to the ball. We want your hands to be forward and have the low point in front of the swing. And we want to have your body's position on top of your left leg. So when I look at your one position, I'm going to look at those things that you do that may be preventing a good impact. To begin with, you set your club behind the golf ball closed where it is aiming to the left where Grant has his uh, either square or even slightly open. So one of the things that we're going to work on is uh, how to change your body form in order to have a better club position. Now the reason that you have done that is because of your grip. You have a tendency, you, your history has been to hit the ball to the right and so your solution, your correction was to set the club face pointing more to the left to offset that. And what we want to do we want to correct this in a fundamentally sound way by having a better grip which starts the club square to your aiming point and then learn how to properly swing so that the club face can return at that aiming point and not be open at impact. So changing your grip will be one of the first things that we need to do. The second thing we need to do is to set up at the golf ball at the beginning of the swing in a way that helps us return the club at impact where the low point of the swing is in front of the golf ball. Everything is about controlling the low point of your swing. I need to have you hit the ground with precision and I need to have that place on the ground always be in front of the golf ball. If we look at Grant he has almost set himself up in like a little mini impact position. He starts with his hands in front of the ball because he knows he wants his hands in front of the ball at impact. And so you see a nice extended left arm lined up with the shaft and the shaft is leaning forward. And you set up with a, almost a vertical shaft. Now your left arm is in good shape um, but the, you have that little bend here and your hands are behind the golf ball. Now one of the things that we are going to do 
is uh, look at your ball position. Obviously, if if we move the ball back in your stance a little bit, that would make it easier to have a shaft lean. So ball position is, in, is also an important fundamental in having a good impact position. Also, Grant has more weight on his left side than he does his right side at the beginning. You can see that his head is just a little bit closer to the, the left line the, the green line on his left foot and you're you're a little bit more centered here. Grant has about 55 percent of his weight on his left side at impact so he presets himself with more weight on the left that will help him get to the 85 percent that he needs to be at impact. So I'm going to set you up where you have just a little bit more weight on your left side. The other thing I'm, I want to do is I want to flare this foot out a little bit. You can see how Grant has flared this foot out a little bit towards the target. And you're a little bit square here. I want to turn that out just a little bit. That position of the foot facilitates a proper weight shift in the downswing. Now we're in the three position. This is when the left arm is parallel to the ground. Now I'm only going to focus on those missing fundamentals that are correlated to arriving at an impact position with 85% of your weight on the left side. So I'm looking for those things that is going to prevent that or make that difficult. When we look at where Grant's weight is in his backswing, now I said earlier that he started with about 55% on his left side and as he has started his backswing and has reached the three position, it's easy to see that he has maintained the majority of his weight still on the left side. So he started with 55% and he has kind of maintained that. He may have even slightly increased that. There, you see no evidence that he has moved to the right foot. He's not swayed or leaned to the right, but he's staying on his left side. When we look at your three position, it's easy to see that you have swayed to the right. You have much more weight on your right leg than you do your left leg. So you're not just turning in your backswing, you are swaying and leaning and turning. And so what one of the things that you need to learn is how to take a backswing without the sway. How to turn and rotate your core but not lean to the right. One of the things that you do really well is you have a really good extension. You have hinged your wrist really well, so you almost have a 90 degree angle. So you're loading your hands with some power there. That's very good. One of the characteristics of your swing is that you have a very short and compact backswing. You do not have a very long backswing. Your top of your backswing is just a little bit beyond the three position. You can see in Grant's uh, four position, the top of the backswing is called the four position. He has taken his hands a little bit higher and coiled his shoulders a little bit more than you. And your shoulders are basically here. Right now, I do not consider this a an essential missing fundamental. That, I'm very comfortable with you continuing a short backswing. The first thing that I want to work on uh, in your little game plan to, for game improvement um, is to work on your weight shift. Now we're in the five position. This is when the left arm gets to parallel to the ground on the downswing. We can see that Grant has moved even more weight now to the left side. So his his move from position four to position five includes a kind of a falling to the left. He's moving to the left. You're seeing both legs with angles here. And so he is, as he's pulling and unwinding his shoulders to hit the golf ball with his upper body, he's letting his lower body drive to the left. You're still. Uh, behind your left foot. You really haven't shifted your, your legs, your knees are still uh, balanced on top of your feet. And so again, it, the fundamentals that we're going to work on 
is how to get on the left, start on the left, stay on the left, move to the left. This is the sixth position. This is when the club is parallel to the ground on the downswing. This is right before impact. Obviously, if you can have a good sixth position, it's easier to have a good seventh position, the impact position. So the closer your body gets to impact, each position prior to impact, it becomes even more important. You have an excellent extension here. You are in a pretty good sixth position from the upper body. You have uh, the angle in your wrist is being held and maintained pretty well. Again, it's um, the, the thing that we're going to work on is the lower body. Now we've already reviewed the impact position, so this is the first position post-impact, the eighth position. If we look at from the knees down, Grant has shifted uh, towards the target, uh, but we're also starting to see that as well. You, your right knee is, is starting to drive towards the left knee. You haven't really moved your weight to the left, but your your lower body is starting to, to do that athletic move to the left. Your head is still a little bit too far back. Grant has his head closer to his left foot and you're closer to your right foot. The post-impact position does not directly affect the golf ball. The ball's already left the face of the club. But it does provide some clues um, of what your club might have looked like and might have been doing during impact. One of the things that I look for in the eighth position, the eighth position is the position we're looking at now. This is when the club is about a 45 degree angle um, after the impact. Grant keeps his elbows close together. His arms are extended here. His belt buckle is almost pointing right at the, the club. We can see that your left arm is starting to bend and pull away from the left side. Your elbows are starting to separate here. Also your right wrist, uh, similar to what we saw with your chipping action, your right wrist is starting to bow right here. The back of the right hand is, is starting to bow just a little bit. Whereas the back of Grant's right hand is still angled back this way. So one of the things that we will work on is how to correctly activate your hands through impact, how to execute the hands correctly through impact. This is a clue that the way you activate your hands through impact is not the fundamental action that you want. Here we are in the ninth position and let's look at the upper body. Uh, the ninth position is when the right arm is parallel to the ground and um, there's some obvious differences here. You can see how Grant has kept both arms extended. His elbows are very close together and your left arm and your elbows are separating. Your left arm is, is, is bending here. You're cupping the back of your left hand. If we were to look um, at Grant's white glove, it, we see that it is below the right hand. His wrists are crossed in this position. So when he gets to this position, his left hand is underneath the right hand, and your left hand is above the right hand. Again, this is a clue of what your hands are doing through impact. The reason you hit the ball too far to the right is because that impact your club face is too open. One of the reasons your club face is too open is because you have not yet learned how to correctly square the club up with your hands. Once I change your grip and show you the proper way to go through the golf ball with your hands, then you will have a whole new dynamic in your golf shot. Here we are in the tenth position, the final finish. On the right you can see how Grant has finished in that classic pro finish. Um, he's standing up tall. His um, weight is solid on this left side. 
He probably has 95% of his weight on his left side, if not more. His back leg is on the tip of the toe. His eyes are looking over his arm. His belly, his, his uh, belt is, is the most forward, has just a little bit of an arch in his back. That's the classic position. You're standing uh, straight up. You still don't have quite all your weight or very much weight on your just left foot. You have a little bit more weight towards your left side than your right. You're off the back foot. We're going to learn how to move your right leg where this knee gets up to where your left knee is um, so that both knees are, are in, on top of that left foot. Once you learn the proper setup and how to control your weight during the backswing and downswing, achieving this finish here will be easy. So in your initial game plan, the things that we're going to work on are basically two things. I'm going to be teaching your legs and I'm going to be teaching your hands. Once you learn how to move your legs properly and fundamentally through the swing, and once you learn how to move your hands fundamentally correct through the swing, then you're going to have a whole new dynamic to your golf game.